Thank you very much for the opportunity to present very briefly on this. Um, Unpassed Waters is looking to join together the um, hugely diverse range of, of marine and maritime collections. Um, why are we doing it? Well, because uh, the, the seas around uh, the UK's nations are of uh, central interest to uh, its island and maritime nation identity. And it's of enormous interest to the public. Uh, there's vast amounts of, of evidence of uh, how excited people are about uh, things beneath the sea or of the sea. Um, there are critical management issues. Uh, we have no integrated marine inventory of, of sites to cover the whole of the UK, despite massively accelerating exploitation of the seabed. And we know, therefore, that there are clear real world applications for the research that we're proposing in terms both of public access and uh, research and management. Um, so uh, the, um, uh, the test bed that we've decided to use um, uh, is one which is, uh, has no meaningful boundaries in terms of geography, it's the sea, uh, it's relevant to all four home nations and far beyond and the typological range of materials that we're looking at are extraordinary or is extraordinary from seismic and sonar survey data sets, old photographs, artifacts from the seabed, verbal reminiscences, art and so on. Um, it, the the uh, test bed is also a, a very large, deliberately a very large consortium, uh, eight universities, four IROs, five collaborating organisations, four UK heritage agencies in support and five uh, uh, partners. Um, and they are a microcosm really of the range of institutions and organisations that are very likely to want to either research or, or, or consume research uh, excellence from uh, maritime collections. And of course it tests the, the uh, crossing of legislative and administrative boundaries, which is no small thing in terms of collections. Um, our objectives uh, uh, clearly to uh, aggregate, interrogate, analyse and develop access to a distributed but integrated marine national collection, no small um, uh, uh, ambition. But we're going to try and do that not only through the technical digital humanities side of uh, uh, um, innovative uh, searching and aggregation and standardisation of metadata and so on, but also through, through three research lenses. Um, we've got people of the sea and we're going to try and test this, uh, this model to see how uh, current communities engage with wrecks either uh, offshore and still submerged um, or onshore such as the Mary Rose and brought into a museum. Uh, to understand how we can create entirely new narratives that can help us understand the significance of those wrecks, something which is uh, quite important to the heritage agencies who, who have to look after the, the listed wrecks, um, and what impact that has on, on how people view the importance of stuff that they can't tangibly touch or, or sometimes ever visit. Um, science and the sea is the second research lens, and that's going to look at how we can develop new kinds of searching to unlock the identity of the, uh, well, some of the hundreds, if not thousands of unnamed wrecks in the Irish Sea in this instance, and give them back their names and identities. And lands beneath the sea is going to look at the prehistoric landscapes that are now inundated by the North Sea and how we can open access to both researchers, but more importantly to the public, in, in very difficult kinds of collections, which are, are very uh, ephemeral and quite hard to read at the moment. Um, so, uh, and using those three lenses, we're then going to work with the public to decide or discover rather what people themselves want in the way of interaction, not what we're serving up to them, but to allow them uh, to define the, way, the significance of how they search and, and what they're looking for. And not only that, but to uh, create user-generated pathways which, which allow people a two-way interaction. They can add to these collections themselves uh, and therefore build up something that is, is co-owned and, and, uh, and shared. Um, and we'll do that through three uh, test groupings, just because this is a discovery project. Uh, the, a non-coastal community 
property um, far away from the sea. What, what on earth has that got to do with me? They're visually impaired and we're really interested to see what sort of soundscapes might be possible in immersives. Um, uh, we know that we record uh, wrecks through sonar, but I don't know if anybody's ever tested how you could use sonar to bring wrecks to life for those who can't see them or, or image them. And then the cross-disciplinary natural and cultural researchers, what are we bringing to break down the barriers between heritage and the natural environment? Um, the direct impacts we think we'll, we'll get out of it is, well, consistent metadata and, and uh, approaches across a very varied set of collections, uh, novel and cutting edge search and query using AI and, and machine learning. Um, importantly, uh, marine historic environment records, inventories for all four nations, or at least the start of those inventories that will interlink and share uh, information in a far richer and integrated way, uh, possibly providing us a model for future terrestrial uh, uh, inventories. Um, real world research outputs that we can use directly, uh, some early career researchers in digital humanities, and the public exhibition side of this is going to be tested as part of the evaluation of the overall project. Um, and finally, the, the benefit of the discovery and, and towards a national collection program, we expect to be able to uh, parcel up guidance around uh, best practice, case studies that can be used beyond the, the uh, programme, and evaluation of, of how uh, both of our, our successes and probably more likely some, in some places of our failures or, or, or uh, hiccups, so that that can be used uh, to uh, aid AHRC policy development should they so wish to do so. Thank you very much.